Hey everyone, welcome to researchmd.com. Another great presentation today. We're going to continue our lectures on antibiotic. Uh, my name is Dr. Pramil Charet. I'm a program director in internal medicine residency, transitional residency uh, in the United States, and associate professor of medicine to a large medical school in the United States. Let's continue our presentation. We've been talking about cephalosporins. Today we're going to continue and we're going to look at the cephalosporin fourth generation. Please make sure we gave independent presentations on several penicillin, cephalosporin first generation, second generation, and third generation. Okay, so let's start with the fourth generation and let's take a look back at how do we approach today's topic. So, we have the structure of the cephalosporin here and then you have the structure of the fourth generation cephalosporin and then mm, you have the mechanism of action and then resistance or which is not active against some of the drugs and uh, then we look at the coverage gram positive coverage gram negative coverage and let's look at the anaerobic coverage okay and then we will look at the general characteristics and uh, you talk about, there's only one drug pretty much we need to know we use in the United States like that is cefepim and we'll talk about uh, the um, some of the complications of cefepim and we'll finish it up. Now let's look at the structure. When you look at the cephalosporin structure, we have two things, two rings, one dihydrothiazine ring right here and you got a beta lactam ring. Those are the two important rings in the cephalosporin. So when uh, fourth generation, what happens is you look at this R1 and R2, they make the modification and they make a new, um, a new drug. That's the way they modify, okay? And then now let's look at the mechanism of action. It inhibit the penicillin binding protein. So what happens is like peptidone glycan synthesis in the cell wall is kind of affected. So the bacteria cannot survive, okay? So the need to remember inhibit the penicillin binding protein and the peptidoglycan wall is affected. Now, I want you to remember a mnemonic right here about the resistance. Like some of these drugs, I mean, uh, it will not work against this organism. The mnemonic is LAN, L-A-N-E. L is listeria, A is atypical, example legionella, M is mycoplasma, and E is enterococci. Okay, remember the mnemonic LAN. Now, let's take a look at the gram-positive coverage. We have Streptococcus pyogenes is covered, Streptococcus viridiens, many strep pneumonia, modest activity against R4ES, and then cover MSSA. Pretty much again, the, you know, you got the coverage from the third generation cephalosporin. Now, when you talk about the gram-negative, I think this is the most important part right here, right? Pseudomonas, my friend, very, very important, okay? This drug covers pseudomonas infections very, very effectively. Some E. coli, some Klebsiella, Proteus, many other endobacteria, say Haemophilus, Morexella, Neisseria, Gonaria, and all of this could be covered in the gram negative. When you look at the anaerobes, don't even think about it, poor coverage. Okay, remember that. Now, general characteristic, therapeutic concentration, it's um, in every part of the tissue, it can penetrate, so not a problem. You can go into the lungs like almost like 100%. Fortunately, we have only one drug in this category, which is cefepim, okay? And the cefepim, you got IV, you give like IV, um, you get like the dose is like two gram every eight hours, but you have to, it's renally excreted. That's the main thing to remember. If you don't forget everything else, but remember, it's renally excreted, we renally dose. Now, first thing you have to do, calculate the creatinine clearance. If the creatinine clearance is between 11 to 29, you get 500 milligram every 24 hours. If it is less than 11, you give 250 milligram every 24 hours. Hemodialysis, you give, with the day one, you give like one gram. And then the other, uh, other days, you start with the 500 milligram every 24 hours. Okay? Now, let's look at some of the side effects. Main thing you need to worry, it can cause encephalopathy. There's lots and lots of reports in the elderly people causing encephalopathy. Just be careful. And then, if you have, especially if you have high dose and renal failure, it's not a good combination. And then it can cause non-convulsive non status epilepticus, rash, diarrhea, nausea, vomiting is common. 
And then let's look at the lab test abnormalities can cause LFT can go up. It can cause PT, PTT to go up. It can also increase BUN, can also make Coombs test positive or autoimmune hemolytic anemia. Okay. So remember all of these things, we remember comparing that this is the fourth generation cephalosporin. The main drug we need to know is covering on pseudomonas, uh, you know, now go cefepim, renally dose it, look at the side effects. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with another presentation soon.